And today I'm going to be speaking from the subject of perfect peace. I'm speaking from the subject of perfect peace. And the Lord is going to impart this peace by giving us some understanding about how he operates. You know, we should be able to go through every season of life with perfect peace. That means I'm not afraid, I'm not troubled. God has imparted unto me a supernatural peace that no matter what I'm going through, there is an assurance there and there is a confidence there and there is a hoping in God there. Lord, I give you the praise. God don't want us feeling like our lives is like a person who's, who's in a car, but no one's behind the wheel. You know how you could be afraid that I'm about to crash and something is about to go terribly wrong, as if someone is not in control. And God wants us to know that he is in control. And if we lack peace, it is because we have not trusted in him. Lord, I give you the praise. So God wants us to trust him. And, and again, we have to understand some of the workings of the Lord. So I want to read this verse of scripture here in Isaiah 26, which would be the key verse for what we're going to discuss on today. And it's Isaiah 26, starting at verse three. It says, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee trust and here's the instruction in the Lord when forever there is a benefit that comes along with trusting the Lord and trusting in him forever that means if I don't see how I'm going to pay my bills, I'm still trusting in the Lord. If I don't know how I'm going to put food on my table, I'm trusting in the Lord. If I'm in class and I'm in school and it looks like I'm about to fail this class, I'm going to be trusting in the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If I'm in a marriage and it don't look like it's going in a good direction, I'm trusting in the Lord. Amen. If I'm going through a season when there's a sickness in my body, I am still doing what? Trusting in the Lord. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. Lord, I give you the praise. And I like that beautiful song that she was just singing. It's the Lord that's going to write your story. And you have to make that declaration like David did. The Lord is my shepherd. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I shall not want. He's the God of your present and the God of your future. And he is the one who is writing your story. Lord, I give you the praise. Come on, the Lord wants to seal us in this perfect peace today. Lord, I give you the praise. Seal us in this perfect peace. Let me tell you something else about this perfect peace. It says, trust in the Lord forever. And let's continue that verse. For in the Lord Jehovah is what? Everlasting strength. Did you hear what I just said? Everlasting strength. There is nothing that is stronger than him that can make void his counsel. Lord, I will trust you forever and you will keep me in perfect peace because my mind is going to be stayed on you. Lord, I give you the praise. I give you the praise. Now, this comes with what you know, sometimes we don't like this word a little bit, but it comes with acceptance. We may not like every single season of our life, but every single season is designed to serve a purpose. We need to know for every single season there is a purpose. Lord, I give you the praise. How many of you know we talk, when, when God talks about the saints, he talks about the predestination. 
He talks about limiting things in advance. God is in absolute control over every, every single one of our lives and what happens in our lives. In fact, I want to show you a little bit of the details in that. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3. This is what I mean when I say acceptance. Lord, I give you the praise. This is what I mean when I say acceptance. How many of you know, you, I, may, I, I may have a, a day when I wish, Lord, I wish I had $400 million. You know what that means? That would mean I won't have to get up and go to work in the morning. I won't have to peel myself up out of that bed at, you know, right at about 7 o'clock exactly, a little bit before maybe, and take my tired self into the bathroom and make sure I'm starting to get dressed and take a shower and everything else and get ready to go to my job. That's what $400 million would do for me. Lord, I give you the praise. Not only that, I can treat my wife and buy her whatever she want. Amen. Amen. Get you a nice, wonderful beach house so that you can look at the beach. She loves the water. Amen. Now, she has to settle for not having the $400 million, and she has to settle for maybe once, maybe twice in a year we might make our way to Florida, and that may be for one day. Amen. Look at it for a few hours. Now we're going back home. Amen. Amen. Go kick your feet in the water. Put some, some sand on your toes. It's time to go back to Baton Rouge. Amen. No beaches in Baton Rouge. Amen. There's nothing but the Lord's work and our jobs in Baton Rouge. Amen. That's what we got. Amen. So she has to settle for that. Amen. This is what I mean when I say acceptance. I have to accept it that this, it may not be the way I want it to be. Let's look at a few of this. Lord, Lord, I give you the praise. I give you the praise. Here it is in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. These seasons that serve purpose, Lord, I give you the praise. And when I say acceptance, and again, this kind of goes with the revelation of perfect peace. If I realize that you, my God, are in control of the seasons and you brought me into a season, I know that even though I don't like what I'm seeing, you're still driving the car. And you brought me this way for a reason. Whatever the reason may be, you brought me down this path for a reason. You are driving the car, Lord, and I'm here in this wonderful place. Lord, I give you the praise. <laughs> it's kind of like the children of Israel where the Bible says, I suffered you to hunger. Lord, I give you the praise. Lord, you actually brought me to a place where I was hungry, and then you fed me that with manna that no, my fathers didn't know. And what did you want to teach us, Lord? Man doesn't live by bread alone. This is the lesson for this season of hunger. But by every single word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, I have to teach you. Lord, I give you the praise that you're not living and surviving just by bread. I need to teach you to live by my word. A season of lack and hunger will do that for you. Lord, I give you the praise. I need to be able to believe and know that truly, how many of you know you got sometimes it's those hard seasons where God give you a revelation that, Lord, that prayer, give us this day our daily bread, you are truly the source of it. Lord, I give you the praise. This, this helps bring us to a place of greater dependency and trust in him. Lord, I give you the praise because sometimes we may lose that trust when we have it all, when we, when we have too much. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We begin to put our trust in riches and we begin to put our trust in jobs. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's a, there's a funny thing that sometimes if you're not careful, abundance can do to you. Lord, I give you the praise. I give you the praise. I was about to read the seasons verse, but let me jump back over here since I said something. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read the seasons verse if the Lord say the same. Lord, I give you the praise. Proverbs 30, verse, uh, Proverbs 30, verse 7. Lord, I give you the praise. Lord, please don't be answering my desire for 400 millions with this verse right here. Amen. Please don't be answering my, 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 
Lord, I give you the praise. I asked you for four, me 100 million, Lord. I could pay the church off, man. I think I would buy houses for a lot of y'all, if not all of you, if I had a chance to do so. Amen. I had to, had to give y'all all a little budget. Okay, I can't give them all a million. Maybe I can. Uh, you know what, 400 million, I could give every one of you a million and still be okay. You know what I'm saying? You could all buy houses for yourselves, pay it off free. Amen. The church would be paid off free. Everything I happen. Lord, it would be Christmas for everybody. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it would be the most amazing church. Then you get to tell people, I went to church and got a million dollars, amen. Then they going to want to come. No, if you wasn't a part of the first group, you don't get the million. You had to, you had to, you had to come to the building when there was only nine cars out there. That's when you needed to. If you ain't come in, you don't get the million. Only for the first group, amen. Amen. All I got for you is a word, amen. That's what I got. Amen. The rest of the money is going to my grandkids and my great grandkids. Amen. Lord, I give you the praise. Here it is, Proverbs 30 and verse 7. It says, There's two things have I required of thee. And please don't deny and don't deny me. Deny them not before I die. What do you want? What are you desiring? What two things? Remove me far from vanity and lies. Okay. Yeah, look, remove me from vanity. Remove me from some lies, Lord. Amen. And then he says, give me neither poverty nor riches. Oh, don't just make us just comfortable, Lord. Amen. I want the riches part, Lord. Amen. And he says, feed me with food that is convenient for me, lest I be full and deny you. You know what the, the, the rich young ruler's problem was and what Jesus said? Lord, I give you the praise. It's, it's very hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom. You know what? Riches have the ability to ensnare you. That means when the Holy Spirit is telling you to go in one direction, you'll consider those riches. And if those riches are in jeopardy, if that comfort and that, and that defense and that dependence on money, Lord, I give you the praise, will, will make you think twice. Are you hearing what I'm saying when God is saying go in another direction? We may think it was extreme for the Lord to tell a rich young ruler to sell everything you have and give it to the poor. And by the way, you'll have treasure, not in this life, you'll be poor here, in heaven. Come take up your cross and follow me. He looked at Jesus and walked away. With his wealth, sorrowful. Great wealth has the ability to ensnare us. You got to be careful. Scripture says it like this, the deceitfulness of riches. There's a deceit that comes with riches. You, 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 you have to be very careful. You think you have it. You think you're rich. But guess what? If it costs you your soul, you're really poor. What, what will a man give in exchange for a soul? Um, this heap of riches and wealth can challenge God in my life. Because the day that comes where he may say, I want you to offer Isaac on the altar, that thing that you care about, that thing that you love, and that thing could be wealth and riches because of the comfort and the convenience and the defense that it brings us. Lord, I love it. You, you just, you know, I don't have to worry about anything. Amen. Then God speak and you start arguing with the Holy Ghost. Look at what he says. Neither give me poverty. Nor riches feed me with food convenient for me. Lest I be full and deny you. And say who is the Lord? You know, you might say that if you get real rich. Now we say we right now we 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 spiritual, amen. We we I'll never say that, amen. I'll never say that. That's like that's like Peter, you know what I'm saying? I won't I will die with you, Lord. Then you go deny him three times. What would happen if now it's, it's, I gotta make this plain to you? You come home from church and it's $400 million stacked up in your yard. And it's yours. 
You know, in the bank, you ain't got but $37 and 24 cents. And you were hoping none of them bills go through. None of them automatic bills, amen. And that $37 got to last you for at least another four days, amen. Amen. So you're going to have to do what you got to do. And it's $400 million sitting up there. And then you get ready to go possess this $400 million. You know, I already thought about the house you was going to pay off. All your kids you're going to bless. Amen. You even thought about the church. Why, that tithe is going to take the church to a whole nother level. Pastor going to leave this building on Beaumont, and he will. And he's going to build something huge. Amen. It's going to be nice and glorious. Amen. Oh, yeah, y'all might have AC units in your seats. Every one of you got your own personal units. You can, yeah, on the cars, you can cut it up and cut it down. Oh, I'm a little hot, amen. I'm, I ought to be able to, I can adjust my temperature from up here. It's going to be amazing, amen. Amen. Nobody will have to work the nursery. I just pay people from, to come in and do the nursery, amen. Amen, we'll do it all. It'll be nice and wonderful for you. We may even serve food after every service, Amen. As soon as you finish having church, there's uh, some ribs and steak and, amen, some, some grilled shrimp. We got the cooks back there, amen, to make sure you're full in your bellies after you get the word. Amen. What am I going to do with all of that, Lord? My Lord. Oh, that's a good idea, amen. She says it's a good idea, amen. And then you see that 40 million with your $37.24 in the bank and you got to last, that got to last four, three days and the Holy Spirit say, it's not yours. <laughs> That's right. You're going to think the devil just said that to you. <laughs> You're going to think the devil just said that to you. You're going to be thinking about that $37.24. You're going to be thinking about the 10 cause you done already bought in your heart pay for cash <laughs> and God say it's not yours then you're going to try to reason at least one of the millions Lord <laughs> come on now at least uh, come on we got to at least pay this house off come on now none of it is yours come on now uh, uh, you know what you're going to think about that. They say it's legally yours, but God says it's not. He got some other plan for that. I ain't telling you it's going to be easy. I might need three confirmations for this. Come on now, show me again. Show me. That's what Balaam did. He prayed twice when he didn't like what God was saying. And guess what? He did that over riches. He wanted to please those men over money. So I understand. And, and, that, and, and that, that is why we can't sometimes, we got, we, we got to watch that fullness. Because we may deny the Lord. We may say, who is the Lord? With your holy Christian self. Why? Over that multitude. Riches and wealth have destroyed a lot of people. Prince of Prince of Tower. Think about that. Now, all of the wealth destroyed him. Satan. The multitude of merchandise has filled the midst of thee with violence. The, the, the angel wore jewels and saw his brightness and saw all of the all of the jewels that he wore, and he wanted to take heaven. Money has the ability to change you. So the Lord says, or this man of God here says, in wisdom, lest I be full and deny you. Lord, I give you a raise. Let's put that Proverbs 30 verse back up there. He may say it's for somebody else, and here we're all arguing with the Lord. Lest I be full and deny you. And say, who is the Lord, lest I be poor and steal? He said, don't make me too poor either, Lord. I don't want to have to steal. And take your name in vain. 
That means I have your name, but I act like I don't even know you because I'm so poor, I need to steal everything. Even though I know your name, I'm so poor that if I don't steal, I won't live. Now, if you belong to the Lord and you seek first the kingdom, he said he's going to feed you. So again, when I talk about God steering the wheel and keeping our mind and our hearts upon him and achieving that place of perfect peace that comes with acceptance. I have to accept the seasons of life that you render to me, even though I don't like the season. On one end, I thank God for my job. On one end, I hate my job. <laughs> facts come on facts if we just be honest about it, we're not gonna put the camera on you so that if your boss see this on TV they oh you hate your job huh I saw you saying amen come on now on one end you love it because it helps you to pay your bills but on the other end you hate getting up and going to this place and sitting here for eight hours and then uh, more time for traffic and driving. That's, that's nine hours of the day that I have to give to this. And I do it in, exha in, in, in exhaustion and in tiredness and weariness of the flesh. And it's a continuous cycle over and over again. And I don't know what I'm doing with my life but going to this job. but it's a season that God has rendered to you. He did say you're going to work six days and rest seven. Hmm. Was this your plan? That I would be in misery getting up every day? But you got to be thankful because at least I'm not in a wheelchair or in a nursing home. At least I got the strength to get up. At least I have the mental capacity to do a job. Amen. And these people trust me enough and chose me out of all the people in Bandwurst. They chose me to do this and they're going to pay me for it. Come on now. There's a way to turn what could be bitterness into a blessing. And we have to focus on the blessing. Amen. But again, the situation and circumstances to us may not be totally ideal. Lord, I give you the praise. I give you the praise. You marry a woman and she cheat on you. You sovereign, your life is predestined and God hook you up with somebody that cheat on you. Mr. Hosea, and you got to deal with the fact that this woman keep running out on you? This is the season you brought me in, God. You told me to marry her? Take this woman? Lord, I give you the praise. Could be something like that. Now, as painful and as bitterness, and as, as bitter as that may be, like again, another example, Ezekiel, God tells you, I'm gonna take your wife away from you. She's gonna die. And uh, I, you can't mourn over her. In fact, I need you to take this situation where she died and I, I want to make a word out of it. And you as a prophet of God got to lose the desire of your heart because God want to make a point. So whether you're Hosea and you got to give your heart to a, a whorish woman or you're Ezekiel and he allow your wife to die and he, he does that simply because I want to make a point to these people turn that into a message that requires acceptance that God you have given me a season I do not like and how am I going to survive these seasons I have to keep my mind on you 
I have to come to a place where I accept that you have rendered this. You have predestined this. You are in absolute control. And even though it looks like my life is about to drive off the rails, that you are here driving this car and you took me down this valley for a reason. There is a lesson that I need to get out of this valley. And even if you got to take my wife, to teach it to me, you've chosen to do that. We bind protection in Jesus' name, no taking wives, amen. You gotta be careful. Sometimes you say that stuff up here come to pass right there on you, amen. I'm very careful what I say up here, amen. Especially when I'm in a, far, a perfect flow, you better be careful. Lord, I give you the praise. But it has happened. Think about Elijah the, Elisha the prophet. The scripture says he died a sick man. Elisha, God used you to heal leprosy. You got power in you to raise the dead. And you get taken out by a sickness? Well, you did say in your word that there is a time to be born and there is a time to die. You said that. Do we get to always choose how we die? <laughs> he had victory over death, victory over terrible illness of leprosy until his time came. Where is the ability to route death and sickness where did it go? There's only one explanation. His time. That requires what? Acceptance. I have to accept this. Like with Jesus, I, this cup won't go away unless I drink it. Sometimes the cup that the Lord puts before you is not tasty. It's bitter. But God brought us here for a reason. There is always this greater agenda. That agenda in many regards is what Pastor Tina just preached to you so that Jesus can increase. The rich young ruler needed that message. I need you to sell everything you have and give it to the poor. You know why he wasn't willing to do that? He trusted in his, his riches. Oh, he had the moral side, good. Oh, I won't commit adultery. And if I steal, I'm not going to steal. I keep all the commands from the, the very day I've kept them, Lord. I'll sell everything you have and give it to the poor. What? He needed that lesson so that he could learn to trust in the Lord and not allow his riches to govern his life. Lord, I can follow you as long as my riches are there. Lord, I can follow you as long as my boo thing is there. Come on now. Lord, I'll follow you as long as you fill in the blank. We try to come to God with conditions rather than accepting the season. Maybe he's trying to deliver us from a snare, something that is controlling our, our life, something that won't allow, if we keep it, it won't allow us to live out our full potential because we'll always have that thing in the back of our mind. And we'll consider it when God is talking to us. Well, well you want me to go over here to Africa, but if I leave this, this great job that's paying me, where will I be, Lord? You got the disciples who forsook all to follow, left nets and everything. Let's read a few of these seasons. Let me get ready to get you out of here. Amen. I don't feel like I gave you anything, man. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3. What are we talking about? Keeping our mind on him. 
In him is everlasting strength. There is absolute control in him. And sometimes us being in that place of perfect peace and our mind stayed on him comes with an acceptance of his will. And an acknowledgement that even though it looked like my car is driving off the rails, it's not. You're actually driving it. Come on now. The Spirit of God led me in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. You're leading me into warfare? That don't make sense, Lord. But it's prophetic because he led the children of Israel that way. They too were tempted in the wilderness and failed in many regards. Jesus succeeded where they failed. Lord, I give you the praise. Let's look at some of the seasons of life and understand this. Not one season that you will go through is not without purpose. Maybe we need to understand the purpose, but it's not without purpose. So watch this. I need you to understand what you're about to read is what God has permitted in many regards in our own lives. And we must get the lesson that we're supposed to get out of these seasons. If you truly plan my life and you allow me to go through these seasons, then what am I supposed to get out of these seasons? Well, let's read. Seasons of life. The scripture says to everything, there is a season. A time to every purpose. Under heaven, there is a time to be born. Did you choose when you were going to be born? You didn't. Your mother and your father may think they had something to do with your conception, but the Bible says God has to open your womb. God is in absolute control. Not only that, he has to allow spirit to go into the body that's being formed so that that vessel can live. There's no life if God don't breathe life into it. Lord, I give you the praise. There is a time to be born, a time to die. Again, I remember my own near-death experience, and what the Lord said is not your time yet. That's the only thing he said when he saved me. It's not your time yet. Now, that was beautiful for the moment, but guess what? I do have a time. There is a time when Pastor Donald is going to have to face death and swallow that cup if I'm in this life and in this world before Jesus return. I'm going to have to taste death. Who knows how, what it's going to look like. Every single one of us, if we're not here before Jesus returns, have that in front of us as well. There comes with a degree of acceptance. Lord, I give you the praise. There's a time to be born. We had no power over that. There's a time to die. We really don't have any power over that. There is a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. And you know the seasons. We don't have any power over them. You just better get your seed in the ground when it's time, and you better reap your harvest when it's time. God is in control. God is the one controlling the sun, moon, and stars. And all of the days and all of the months that dictates these things, he's in control. There's a time to plant and there's a time to pluck up that which is planted. There is a time to kill. You might have wanted to kill somebody. The question is, why did you want to kill them? What was the lesson you was teaching me, God, when I wanted to strangle them? 
In earth, we see that people actually get killed. There are wars, there are domestic events that go on, husband versus wives, fathers versus children, children versus parents, people versus people. In life, God in his sovereignty has allowed people to kill. What is the lesson? Then he says, there is also in life, you'll see this, there's a time to heal. Hmm. There's a time to break down. There's a time to build up. There's a time to weep. Sometimes God brings us in a season where we're crying, where we didn't like what was dealt us. And it's enough to make you cry. God put you there for a reason. There's an experience to be gained there, a lesson. Even if it's just compassion or having compassion over somebody else that's going through. We are supposed to bear one another's burdens. I can be sad for you. And God will allow me to experience that. He says there, there is also a time to laugh. And there are times where we're all happy and everything is funny. We're rolling about on the ground and can't have any more fun than this. And then the season change again and you're crying again. Lord, I give you the praise. You know what? I'm going to go back to this. Amen. I'm getting you out of here. Don't worry. Don't worry. I want to show you something. Lord, I give you the praise. Ecclesiastes 7 and 14. We're talking to the man of wisdom. God is teaching us some acceptance today and understanding seasons and the purposes for every season and that God is in control and he'll bring us into a season. We'll be in a season of killing and a season of healing and a season of weeping and a season of laughing, a season where I was born and a season where I died. You will keep us in perfect peace if our mind is stayed on you. In you is everlasting strength. Look at what the scripture says about God. In the day of prosperity, be joyful. But in the day of adversity, consider. I mean, you know, this is a part of the seasons of life and God will bring you right into it. You will have a day of prosperity. And then you will also have a day of adversity. Sometimes we call it warfare. Why I'm going through all this warfare? You're just in your day of adversity. <laughs> oh, we need to get in the church and pray and buy and cast out the devil. God has brought you in a season of adversity. There's a lesson to be gained. Consider God who did it. The one who controls the day of prosperity also controls the day of adversity. And he feeds us with both. If he wasn't feeding us with it, we would not have it. He feeds us with both. He says, I want you to consider, God also had set one, oh, God, you did this, over against the other. To what end? That man should find nothing after him. You are, you know what? This keeps things unpredictable. 
you will give me a day of prosperity and set right next to it a day of adversity. Why did you do that? So that man won't be able to find nothing after him. In other words, I don't know what's going to happen next. You're the God of my future. <laughs> And you're the God of my presence. <laughs> Lord, I give you the praise. You're not going to be able to find it. It's so unpredictable. We don't know. And there's a beauty in us not knowing. It keeps us on our knees. It keeps us on our toes. <laughs> it keeps us watching. It keeps us trusting. It keeps us in a place of spiritual warfare and praying. I even know that when my day of prosperity is here, I'm looking for the day of adversity. I'm not going to get too comfortable in this thing. I'm not going to get too comfortable in this thing. Because I read about seasons that I have no power over that God has given to me. Who set the days one next to the other? God did it. Back to Ecclesiastes 3. Must be my phone. Lord, I give you the praise. Try back here. One more, one more test. Amen. All right. If it's still doing it, it ain't my phone. Amen. As I put my phone back in my pocket. Amen. Testing one two. Amen. All right. Back to the seasons. Give my phone back. <laughs> he gonna edit that out. Amen. All right. I had to switch mics. The seasons of life that he's given us. Ecclesiastes 3, we'll start at verse 3. A time to kill, a time to heal. These are the seasons that we have in the earth. You may not kill anyone, but killing does happen in within this creation. And God has permitted it to happen. He controls it. He's sovereign over it all. The devil may be the one doing the work, but God is the one who released the devil to do it. Last I checked in the scripture, if he wanted to bind him, he can and take him completely out of the earth. He can do it. There's a reason why his evil self is allowed to run around. And again, that don't mean we, you know, just, okay, we're going to permit all of this evil to come. God has given it to me. No, that's, that still means you have a responsibility to pray. But maybe, maybe the revelation, I need a revelation that there's an enemy against me. Or I'll be sitting up here fat just enjoying the wonderful land that God has given me every day. No, I need you on your toes praying and in spiritual warfare. I need you to know that there's a devil coming after you like a roaring lion and he's seeking whom he may devour. I need you to know he works through people and you don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And maybe the reason why they are attracted to you is because they're trying to get you in the sack. And there's a spirit behind them that's using them to get to you so Lord let me go into warfare so that I can discern the plan of the enemy and I can look them right in the face and say get thee behind me Satan even though I see Peter standing in front of me if I'm laid up on a beach all day just on the sand I ain't gonna be thinking about none of that I'm gonna be very selfish I ain't got time for all this warfare. Don't you see me? I, I'll, 
go pray for them. But I got the next three days at the beach. All right. After the three days, I might come see about you. Boy, money will mess you up sometime. You got to be careful. It'll mess you up. You ain't going to have no servant's heart. Oh, you'll try to serve with your money. I ain't going down there. Just send them a million dollars. They'll get happy. <laughs> Sister so-and-so is going through Great Depression. Send her a million dollars. Amen. You're going to get delivered from your depression. Amen. Amen. Deliverance by millions. Amen. <laughs> A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. Amen. You give us a time to jig, Lord. Amen. 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 Get your jig on from the Lord. Amen. A holy jig. Amen. Not a seductive, fornicating jig. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Some of y'all just be trying to do it on the dance floor. Amen. Don't be doing it on the dance floor. Amen. There's a holy jig. Amen. Amen. So I ain't going to even get it. You got to make me act it out in here. I ain't going to do it. We got kids. Amen. You get it. That's right. Tell me again. We got it. Don't, don't, do, don't do it, Pastor. Don't, don't you dare do it. Amen. There's a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones. That may seem so insignificant, but God, you allowed me to be in a season where I gather stones and cast away stones. It's like me working in the yard or something. God, you plan that I be working in the yard and I'm digging through dirt and well, that's what he told Adam. I gave you a garden. I need you to dress and keep it. Take care of what I gave you. So now I got to do your work. Amen. Time to embrace. I'm going to give you a hug. Time to refrain from embracing. I ain't hugging you. God allow you to go through that. There's a lesson to learn. Why are they shunning me today? Why did God allow me to get shunned? Why they ain't talking to me? There's a, there's a purpose. There's a purpose. Said, God said there's a purpose for it. Amen. I'm about to get you out of here. I know. A time to get. Oh, Lord, this other part. But sometimes losing is good. Especially if you lose the wrong thing. Something that's causing you trouble and harm. Amen. Time to lose time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence. Oh, that's a good lesson for us. Amen. And a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate. Can you imagine that God put you in a season where you hate something? It can happen. Family rifts, best friends torn apart, not speaking, disliking each other, not trusting each other, looking at each other, calling them snakes and dogs. God, why are you allowing me to get in this season of hate? There's a purpose for it. A time for war. And this is the lesson for the day, a time for peace. No matter through all of these seasons, I want to be kept in perfect peace. And how do I do it? By trusting in him, knowing he's, he's the one driving a car. And even if you bring me in a season of war, I'm going to keep my mind stayed on you because in you is everlasting strength. I may not like all the seasons that you allow me to go into but if you allow me to go into them you allow me to go into it for a reason and I'm going to look for the purpose in it and trust that you brought me here so that you can conform me into the very image of your son 
he must increase in my life and I must decrease. Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. Let's stand on your feet. You and I have no power over the seasons, just like we have no power over birth and death. All of these seasons God bring us into, you just find yourself in it all of a sudden. Why they don't like me? Well, God put you there for a reason. Come on. Elisha had to go from the man of power and great deliverance to sickness. I know he probably didn't like that. But that was the season God gave him. Scripture says he died of it. It just, it just, that's, there's a time to be born, a time to die. There's a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Maybe you're in that with your family member or a loved one or, or a husband or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, whatever it may be. Time to embrace, time to refrain from embracing. A time for silence. Seasons where you just don't speak. Maybe you're in one of those seasons right now with someone. I need you to be in peace about it because God is driving the car. He controls the seasons. And I'm going to keep my mind stayed on you. Lord, I give you the praise. And if I am under heaven, <clears throat> what the scripture does reveal to me, and this is one of the hopes that I have, that is just for a season. Anything that's under heaven is for a season because guess what? This earth will not even remain. It is here for a season. So all of the things that God allowed to happen that he predestined and limited in advance and said, I'm going to let you go through this. It's only for a season. And I have to learn how to accept the seasons. I have to accept that I don't have $400 million right now. Amen. I'm still holding out hope though. And I'm telling you, Lord, I, I, I hope I won't deny you. <laughs> I don't know what I'd be with in that day. Amen. He may tell me like I, that example I gave you. Hey, none of it's yours. Oh. Is that the Lord talking to me? <laughs> there you go denying the Lord. <laughs> Lord, I give you the praise. Come on. Just think about your life now and what God has permitted. <clears throat> Maybe you're like the apostle Paul who got the thorn in his flesh. He prayed three times and God didn't deliver him. Sometimes we pray about things and God don't deliver us. That means I need to learn a lesson and accept. Come on now. When you didn't been in warfare about something and God don't change it, there's a reason why he didn't change it. Now I have to learn how to accept. Lord, give me the strength to accept the things that I cannot change and the wisdom to know the difference. Come on. If you single right now and can't get in a relationship that is lasting, maybe you're supposed to be single. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's God's will for you. You can try to fight it all day long, but guess what? It doesn't work out. Everything be seeming like it's going fine and all of a sudden you hate each other. And then you left and they to the right. Well, guess what? You may be in a season right now where God says, I want you alone. You have no power over the season. If God wanted your spouse to come along and make you all jump together and be magnets and inseparable, he can do that. I'm a living witness of that. Me and this woman talking on the phone one time, and after that, we was together every single day until marriage, amen, and beyond, 20 years later. One day, I didn't have her. Next day, we together and inseparable. He did it. God is sovereign over that. So God is right now asking you to, he's wanting right now to deal with some bitterness, 
Maybe you have some bitterness about because of what he's allowed. Come on now. Come on. Some bitterness about what he's allowed. I think about, you know, mothers that may miscarry children. There could be some bitterness behind that. It wasn't God's will for that child to come into the earth. Or maybe you had something to do with why that child didn't come into the earth. But at the end of the day, God's will always prevails. Lord, I give you the praise. Lord, I give you the praise. Acceptance. You could be a mother who abused drugs that caused a miscarriage, killed the child. Maybe God didn't permit the child to come into the earth because at that time you weren't a good mother and he thought it better that the child be in heaven with him. But wanted you to know that I thought to give them to you, but then I decided you weren't ready. Lord, I give you the praise. Maybe God did the baby a favor. We have to accept the seasons. We have to embrace the time of weeping, just like we embrace the time of laughter. We don't want the weeping, but the weeping serves purpose. Lord, I give you the praise. We may not like all our circumstances, but God gave them to us for a reason. Maybe you lost a parent and you wish that parent was still here. God removed them for a reason. Their time came. Now you have to learn how to live life without them. Maybe God wants to fill the void that you had with them, with him. And he thought that that was the, the greater lesson to be gained. some of us, our parents are our everything. My mama always gonna have my back, yeah. It's good why you have that relationship, but it's only for a season. God is your father. Let him be your all in all. Lord, we worship you. Just take a few moments again and, and begin to say, Lord, I accept the seasons that you've given me. And I repent for any bitterness. I repent for any anger. I even accept the things that you allow to happen in my life that I don't like. Situations of abuse, molestation, neglect. There's a reason why he allowed. You can ask him what that reason is. But for whatever reason, he permitted it. He could have brought, he could, you could have been born in a different house if he wanted to, but he didn't. He let it happen. I'm convinced more than anything, God allowed these things to happen to form Christ in us. We will learn from those situations one way or another even if the lessons don't come till later when we get saved and we begin to understand why he allowed that process to take place. Thank you, Lord, for instructing us. Thank you for revealing it, Lord. I give you the praise. All right, let's go ahead and get ready to do the sinner's prayer for anyone that needs to repent. I hope you got your acceptance in. I, I hope you apologized. I hope you allow God to bring you into a place of perfect peace knowing he's in absolute control and he let it happen. And that in this life, there are all kinds of things and all kinds of things that happen in these different seasons. We may not like them, but we have to accept them. We have to accept his rule. If you're Hosea, you have to accept that your wife ran out on you. You have to accept that. 
question is, do you want to go after? Lord, I give you the praise. I know it's time to go. I'm getting ready to get you out of here. Sometimes you may look at your spouse and think, you stone crazy and get on my nerves. I don't know what I saw in you. There's a lesson to be gained. <laughs> Maybe the Lord won't teach you covenant. And to learn how to be nice and kind even when the circumstances aren't favorable to you. Because we can all be nice as long as they nice. Let's be nice when they not nice. Lord, I give you the praise. Rendering evil for evil, good for good. Grow up. And be good no matter what. Mm -hmm. Be good no matter what the season is. No, no matter what hand is dealt me, I'm going to be good. In loneliness, I'm going to be good. <laughs> and when I got all kind of people in my face wanting to get with me, I'm going to be good. Come on now, be good all the time. Let's, let's pray. Let's repeat after me. If you need to repent of anything, get in on this prayer. If you just want to be washed, get in on this prayer. Father God, I come to you and I acknowledge my sin. But today, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Change me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. I accept your salvation, and I accept that all of my sins have been put on Jesus, and now I stand in your perfect righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for tuning in to the television broadcast of Bethel Christian Church with Pastors Donald and Dana Hunter. We hope this broadcast was a blessing to you and invite you to join us for the live worship experience at 1906 Beaumont Drive, Baton Rouge, Louisiana 70806 at 10 a.m. for Sunday services or online at www.bethelbr.net.